church is a business. It's yeah. non-profit business, but we're still trying to build something. I deem pastors as some of the greatest salesmen mm. in the world. For us, it's no, it's literally no different than, than what corporate America is doing. It has to be built brick by brick and stone by stone, every business does. I often hear people say, it's Matthew, you know, I don't want God in my money. I don't want God in my politics. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to get, or anywhere to get political, but mm -hmm. I am here to get biblical. Democrats and Republicans aren't enemies. Yeah, nah, good. man, get rid of that. We're yeah. Americans. Reconciliation, the forgiveness, man, come on. That's what we need in this nation. Bring in the fire is my guest today. Travis Hearn is a senior pastor of Impact Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. Impact is a fast-growing church that began as a Bible study for the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals NFL team. Travis also serves as the team pastor for the NBA's Phoenix Suns and served as a team chaplain for the NFL as well as major and minor league baseball for over a decade. Author of multiple books, including a three-volume set, a 30-day 30, a 30 journey with God, in the soon-to-be-released book we'll be mentioning here on this podcast. So welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the squad, the Seven Figure Squad. Let's go. Pastor Travis. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Awesome, man. So yeah, so, na so native of Arizona, born and raised. Yeah, born and raised my whole life. Born in Maricopa County Hospital and haven't left ever since. So Maricopa, the, the, the whole county that had all the, yeah, vo the voting things on the yeah. voting machine. Like, you go <laughs> yeah, carry that, one, and that, all one. Yeah, okay. that one. <laughs> okay. So, so you know, it's interesting as we're talking uh, before you hit the podcast, it's interesting to me how many people come to the faith, come to ministry, and the life is, I mean, you got a lot of stuff you got going on growing up. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of stuff growing up. You, you said your mother, how, how old was she when she gave birth to you? Yeah, 16. She was 16 yeah. years old, and, mm -hmm. then, and then you have a father present but absent, mm -hmm. not around, no relationship, but here you are, you're, 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 you're building a thriving church, and, 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 uh, and, and, and the coolest thing about what you did is you opened during COVID. Am I right in saying that? We we opened our new building during COVID. During COVID? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had church when everybody else was shutting down. We opened our doors for our grand opening on actually it was on December sixth of twenty twenty. So yeah, that was crazy. Wow. So so a lot. Of, so those are you out there. That's an entrepreneur. You're wondering what do I got to listen to a pastor for? Well, listen, <laughs> there's a lot of things I go through and you go through as an entrepreneur that pastors go through in terms of building a church. So yeah. let's let's unpack that a little bit. I, to me. I deem pastors as some of the greatest salesmen mm. in the world. Mm. Because, here's why. Because you're selling us on a man you've never physically met. <laughs> True. You're selling us in a destination that we've never fi you've never physically been to. Right, right. All you've had was an encounter. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> right. Exactly. And yet it moves people. Yeah. It moves since two, 2024 years ago. It's been moving people ever since the, the, the ministry of Jesus. So, yeah. What are some sales skills that you learned being in ministry? I don't even know if you're even aware of it, mm -hmm. but what are some of the things that you see as a pastor and, and how to sell the gospel and how to sell heaven, how to create lesson plans? You know, what are some of the things that you do to effectively sell why people should come back next Sunday, why they should consider accepting Christ, why they yeah. should... Look for heaven and Hey, listen, this is like, I don't know how many podcasts I've done so far on this little uh, appearance tour that I'm doing. This is my favorite intro that I've had yet. Is that right? This okay. is great. <laughs> okay. Be because of the, the, the angle of it, I, I love that that you talked about like, you know, hey, you might not, what's a pastor, what's a church? Um, I, I love that first and foremost because I didn't grow up in church. I mean, uh, I didn't grow up believing in God. I, did, I didn't grow up that way. Um, I, I eventually became a Christian, right? And like you said, you have an encounter. Um, but I, I think a, a church is a business. For I mean, sure. it's ministry. Sure, yeah. Je yeah. Jesus said, I'm going about my father's business. Mm -hmm. it, it's the, the, the idea of church not being business. It is. It's it's yeah. nonprofit business. Right. But we're we're still trying to build something, right? right. right. And and so, you, you know, we, we think about all the builders in this world. I'm building a company. I'm building a whatever firm, this firm, that firm. I'm building a real estate firm, marketing firm, whatever the, you're building. There's so many great things that we build. We build our marriages. We build our families. We build our children. We build, hopefully we build our bank accounts, like all those <laughs> things. But what about, what about, what about building the church? What about building the church of God? And, and so for, for us, um, yeah, it, it's, I, I almost think it'd be like, it, it, it might have a lot of the same concepts as selling, mm -hmm. but, but for church, you're giving yeah. like, like, but, yeah. but here's the thing that the, the best thing that you can give or sell or, or 
you know, hope somebody takes mm -hmm. is free. Yeah. Number yep. one. Yep. And number two is that the product is tried, true, and true. Amen. Don't that. sell me something that doesn't work. Yep. So how can I sell you Jesus if it doesn't work? How can you and I be in Texas today uh -huh. about a story of a man that lived 2,000 years ago and did ministry for three years? Like, like think about the most <laughs> think about the most famous people in the world right now. Who, who's the, who would be, in your opinion, like, I don't know. Right now, uh, I've, I've, outside of my yeah. own personal mentor, Patrick but David, but I'm thinking about Elon Musk. I'm thinking about Bezos. I'm thinking about, you yes. know, uh, yes. for me, you no know, doubt. as a business guy. Uh -huh. But if you look at sports, you know, you look at The Rock. Yes. You know, you, you look Incredibly at, famous. For sure. All of those. So, so like, think about this. Like, uh, so will anybody remember those names in 2,000 years? From now, probably, you know, probably. Well, one I will have them in particular, but yeah. probably not. Yeah, Two thousand years from now, it'd be hard pressed to say yeah. somebody's going to remember the name. Yeah. Maybe in hard, hard pressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but like, we're not going to a hundred years, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred years from. Nobody's going to remember LeBron James. Mm. Nobody's going to remember, and he's incredible, insanely gifted and famous. But m my point in saying that is like, you got a guy who lived two thousand years ago. There's no technology, no cell phones, no, no social internet, media. no social media. <laughs> like somehow it permeated the world, and here we are in freaking Texas, you know, talking about that, right? right. So like the, the 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 power I think of 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 selling is the power of the product. Well, for me, the product is Jesus. J Jesus went to his first disciples who were business owners. Correct. They're fishermen. That's right. And, and he goes, entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah entrepreneurs. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, I'll make you fishers of men. men. I mean, right. there you go. There's yeah. a bi there's a business model, like you know. <laughs> and so I think when 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 it comes to church and building, a, you know, a, a, the business of church, if you will, yeah. which it is ministry, but for us, it started out as a Bible study for the Arizona Cardinals, as you mentioned. Yeah. Eventually, opened it to the public, and you know, I mean, now Sundays are they're wild, dude. It's yeah. ten thousand plus people every Sunday. But like it doesn't just it doesn't just like happen. Yeah. No, yeah. you got employees, you got to hire, you got to fire, you got HR, you got yeah. systems, you got policies, you got marketing, you got branding, you've yeah. got. I mean, it's a it's a business. But like I mean, the thing is about your model as a nonprofit as a church mm -hmm. that a majority of the people that donate their time on Sundays, yeah, are all volunteers. Yes. Yes. Volunteer the, organizations. The, you the, know, the, the church has the biggest volunteer force in the world. The church. Right. Right, and they're all, you know, you know, the line up and they get there early, to get there late. I remember uh, building a church in Chicago with uh, uh, Pastor uh, Wilfredo de Jesus. We call him Pastor Choco, the, the 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 mayor of Humble Park, and we remember renting out the uh, the school auditorium, set up crew, yeah, yeah, three services, breakdown crew, churches all day, yes, you know. So I so yes. talk talk to us about that because you you know to this you started a Bible study, mm -hmm. which eventually grew to a church. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with professional athletes? So, man, I, I, God, I mean, okay. I know that sounds super spiritual, probably to people that don't even believe in God. Like I used to not believe in God, <laughs> but like, this is truly the story. Like I grew up with nothing. Brokenness, poor is poor. Um, mm -hmm. My mom never had it. My mom never had a dad. When my mom was 13, her mom was raped and murdered and left dead. Your, in your the, grandma. It would have been, but yep. I never knew her, obviously, because wow. I wasn't alive yet. Wow. But when my mom was 13, yeah, it would have been my grandma. She was, you know, raped, murdered, left in the hills of California, Southern California. So my mom moved to Arizona to live with her grandmother. So three years later, I'm born. I'm six, my, mom, my mom is 16. I'm, I'm in the world. So, you know, it, it, it's a life of broken. Mine is a life of brokenness. I've, I've grown up watching and being around, you know, drug abuse, substance abuse, alcoholism, anger, I mean, all all of it. That's my yeah, whole life. Yeah. I grew up an athlete, and I think I found therapy in sports. So I played basketball. I played football. I played baseball. I was the quarterback of my football team, and the point guard of basketball, and the catcher of baseball. I was a leader in every, everything I played. I, I didn't know why. I didn't even consider it leadership. It was just yeah. my position. But it was like I was being trained for one day doing what I do. So the end of my senior year in high school, um, I got I got a DUI. I got arrested. I got put in jail. Um, I'm 17. My, the, my mom had to come get me because the jail couldn't keep me because I was a minor. And right. and dude, my mom a few years before that, she found Jesus, and she wow. was. I mean, when I say found Jesus, like I thought she was in a cult. Found Je like like tongue talking, Holy Ghost walking. Like I thought <laughs> she was crazy. Like she's at church every day. I'm like, yeah. why you going to church again? Like mom again? Like yeah. it's Monday night. It's Thursday, Friday. Like and so. I'm answering your question. So when I got saved, dude, it was like, it wasn't like, crap, I did something wrong. Like, 
find the religion. It was, I went from a, a Saturday when I found out that I, I had made this really cool achievement. Uh, you know, uh, here's the story. My, my coach called me on Friday. This is 1993, okay. you know, fe- February 19th, 1993. Which sport? He, he calls me. This is for basketball. Okay. He was my coach for one year. This is wild. I, now that I think back, this is so wild. He calls me and goes, my car broke down. Can you take me to the Arizona All-State Selections? Which, which oddly enough, we're at a school called Phoenix Christian. And I go, wow. sure. So I take him, I drop him off. I'm an athlete. I can't go in. You know, he comes out an hour later and he goes, congratulations, you made first team, whatever, you awesome. know, blah, blah, blah. So, but you kind of know, you kind of know, like, I'm probably going to get the award because you played everybody. But then he goes, do you want to go celebrate? 45-year-old okay. man, teacher okay. at the school, basketball coach. And I go, what'd you, well, I said, what'd you have in mind? He yeah. goes, he goes, I'll buy all the alcohol you can drink tonight. There you go. There and you I go. was like, wow. Was that a test? Yeah, no, well, I, I was like, I'm street smart. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, is yeah. this a setup? Yeah, yeah, like, right. is it, <laughs> this is a setup. This clown trying to. And so, man, I, I, I was like, let's go. We went down the road. Dude, I drank and drank and drank and drank. And I mean, I got so drunk. And I tried to drive home. Mm-hmm. An hour home. An hour drive home. I got about 30 minutes home. Red and blue lights pulled wow. me over. Arrested me. He denied everything. He wasn't driving, so he wasn't in trouble. I didn't tell on him because I you know, that's it wasn't who I was as a kid. I'm like, I'm not going to rat somebody out. Yeah, yeah. And so I end up in jail. And so it goes from you made first team to you're in jail yeah. to mom picks me up and goes, hey, do you want to go to my pastor's house? And it's midnight, dude, on Saturday. There's church the next morning for them. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, um, sure. I go in midnight, I come out at 4.30 a.m. And I mean, dude, crying, giving my life to Jesus, surrendering. Like, because I think I had been surrounded, yeah, but never yeah. surrendered. Got it, got it. It's like, right. surrounded yeah. by sure. God. So my mama loved God, yeah. my grandmama, I have yeah. a Bible in my room. Because like, spiritually, you're still like, ah, ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You point it out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and and so I went from surrounded to surrendered, and and that really catapulted. It, like it was like, dude, what God did in my life was so crazy that I wanted to give it away. I wanted to be like, here, 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 here. I don't yeah. have to sell you on it. Yeah. Here, here's the sales. Look at me. Look what God did in me. I don't drink anymore. I don't weed out anymore. I don't curse anymore. I look. I'm I'm the product, right? This yeah. is what God did in me. Yeah. Do you want it? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I want some of that, you know? Yeah. And so I started getting asked to like speak at youth groups and young lives and businesses and camps and yeah. churches. And because of the story, yeah. this story was so crazy. So then to answer your question, cause I haven't yet, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a missionary came through this is mm-hmm. all new to me. Mm-hmm. I'm 17 came through and he's like, Hey, we're going to do this mission trip to Mazatlan and it's 10 days. And like, God wants you to go, you know, I'm in the church. Like, I, I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but I'm like, God's talking to me. Nobody course, else is even course. in this room. Like, this is for yes, me, right? Yes, yes. So I sign up, raise my money, start going to the training. And dude, I get a packet in the mail from the AIA, which is the Arizona Interscholastic Association. They govern all the high school sports of Arizona. And it was a cra- congratulations packet. Congratulations. You made your Arizona high school all star team for basketball for the West, one of 12 players that gets to play in this game. That's great. Bro, I was like, freak, yeah, let's go, I did. Yeah. You know, yeah. I flipped the page, same days as the mission strip. Uh-oh. All 10 days, exactly okay, here the we same. go, what do we do? Exactly, yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Well, I go to my mama, and my mom's like, you know, what do you, you know? What do you think God? Once in a lifetime opportunity to be on that 12, yeah, right? 12 man team. Right? What God, what do you think God? I said, well, I already know what God said. I'm supposed to go on the mission trip. She's like, okay, baby boy, like you supposed so so how did I get involved in 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 pro sports? Sport? I didn't even know it existed. Wow. So a few years later, I was invited. I was asked. I didn't go looking for it. I never applied for it. I didn't interview for it. I just my story and the power of God and the power of life changed in sports. And then some eventually people were like, Hey, would you come serve our team? And so it happened with, with baseball and the Phoenix suns, like at, at the exact same time. And so this is my 23rd season with the Phoenix suns. And I know, I know, I know not everybody listening believes in God or Christian. And I'm good with that. I, I hope that you'll consider it, but, but this is my story. Yeah. And this is what I would say. Yeah. Jesus said, whoever loses his life will find it. 
Mm. Meaning, throw your life down, mm. man. Don't live it for mm. yourself. Don't. It, it's okay to make. It's okay to make money. It's okay to have stuff mm. as long as stuff doesn't have you. That's it's right. okay to make money as long as money you. isn't your god. <laughs> yeah, right, it doesn't right. have you. And so you know. So my thing was like. God gave me this open door. I walked through it, and I, and that's just how I live my life. It's not yeah. super, you know, well, point one, point two, point. It's just like, okay, God, yes. Yeah. Like, sure, okay, that sounds scary, or that sounds fun, or that sounds tough, but if you if you need me to do it, then God, I'm in. You know? so, so, no, so no college? Mm-hmm. No, I did go to college. Oh, you go to college. But okay. what I did, you know how yeah. today there's something called a gap year? Yeah. Like kids take yeah. a gap year. Uh-huh. Well, there wasn't such a thing when I was a kid, but I took a gap year <laughs> okay. because I didn't know the Bible. And so I actually, I, I said, I'm going to take a gap. I went, I went to practice with a couple basketball teams yeah. and, and I was thinking about playing college basketball. Mm-hmm. Then I was going to be a college coach. And, yeah. and, but now, man, now I'm like, now I'm, now I'm shook. Yeah. Now I'm like, what the heck? I'm at this pivotal age. Like, what do I do with my life? Sure. And, and so I, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to a Bible school for one year. And I went to that Bible school and it was the best, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me, man. Like I, I, I read through the, the, for the first time, the entire so you Bible. A, you, you, got a, you got an education. You, you actually yeah, had, yeah. academically went through an education. Yeah. Went yeah. The Bible. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Yeah. An actual Bible school. Yeah. And so, I mean, but it was like crazy, like memorized 365 verses that year. <laughs> I mean, it was intense. Well, if you're going to sell the product, you got to know your product. You do. That's right? no doubt. And yeah. and I didn't, I did, I did end up, uh, I went online through yeah. University of Phoenix while I was in the ministry and I got a, you know, my, my communications degree and my business degree, both. I did both because it, it served what I was doing. Yeah. And as weird as that sounds, it was it was the perfect roadmap and path for me yep. because, hey, I'm a I'm a speaker. I I talk. I preach. I teach. I write. I journal. Right. I devotions, books. Yep. So I need to know how to do all that stuff. So I was already doing it, yep. but the education piece of it really enhanced that. Yep. And, uh, and and also the business degree. You know, you, the, yep. the church you're going to have to know how to do yep. business. Sure. I mean, for Impact yeah. Church, it's you know, it's it's a it's a it's a multi million dollar a year. Money's coming mm-hmm. in. Money's Budget, you got yeah. budgeting and where the money's going and all those things. You know. Yep. I want to get to that in a second. Well, yeah. I, I mean, my actual question: Why do you think God uses stories like yourself? Why do you think He uses people in such tough upbringing? bad luck, heartbreaking type of backgrounds Yeah, to use them to turn things around, to turn things around in their life. They use, I, I see that you, that characteristic set used the most in the Bible and, and obviously in yeah. situations like this in, t- in terms of my interviews with many different people in, in your chair. Because it shows the power and the glory and the majesty and the ability of God. That's why. But, but, but pastor, I'm not worth it. You know, I'm a drunk. I'm an alcoholic. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm addicted to this. I'm addicted to that. Mm-hmm. And I think I think in some degree we've all felt that way. Uh-huh. All, all and there's nobody in the world that hasn't felt that way. Like crap, I screwed that up, or I'm a failure, or I'm not, I'm, wor- I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, yeah. or I'm broken, or I'm yeah. insecure, or whatever. I, yeah, I have no value, or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but 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 that's just not true. I, I always say, don't buy the lie. Like the, the the enemy's throwing lies, pitching lie. Like don't buy the lie, man. Like you have value. The the, the enemy would love for you to think that you don't. Because he knows what you could do if you actually believed that you don't, you know. So what's his what's his tactic? It, you know, well the Bible says he's the deceiver, he's the accuser, he's yep. you know all those things. So I, I think understanding like like God is sovereign. He he'll take the nobody and and make them into somebody. Yep. He'll take you know he put take you from the background to the foreground, from the bottom to the top. Like that's just who he is. Yeah, yeah. It's what he did. And for me, he did it in such a way where. Matt, I can't say, oh yeah, I, 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 all I can say is he, 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 yeah. I, I have no, there's yeah. no, there's nothing about me yeah. that, that I go, look at me. It's, yeah. it's God, yeah. dude, the grace of God okay. and the mercy of God. Yeah. And just, just, I think just being like, God, okay, I'll yeah. do it. So, you know, a large part of the people I do consulting for are, are people are CEOs and uh, VPs of sales, chief of sales, and they want to help me, uh, they want my help to get them to a higher level of sales teams. Yep, yep. Type of okay. So I see a pastor mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Yes. You're recruiting, yes. you're attracting a sales team, whether it be associate pastors, whether it be your deacons, everybody's selling to some capacity along the way. What are some characteristics that you identify in the body of the church that you're growing and, and, and building that can serve a certain capacity? How do you recruit from within? How do you attract people from you know, maybe different uh, um, 
career paths yep. to potentially serve, start serving the church. That's great. Well, first of all, I live in Scottsdale, so we are the yeah, yeah. the entrepreneur capital of the nation. <laughs> we are the you know business owners and yeah. and 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 seven, eight, nine figure earners, and like th- those are my church is filled with those people. Yeah. I'm sure your um, parking lot looks sick. Oh, it, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's a little it's a little flashy. I mean, it's a little <laughs> it's a little bit like you know Rolls Royce and, and Lamborghini and and. Uh, you know, the Cullinans and all that. But yeah. there's normal people, too. Yeah, they're, they're, you got your Chevys out there. We got some hoop deals out there, man, you know. But, but, but you know what? I would say this. If you don't believe it, they don't believe it. So, so what we're selling is... You know, we we got this savior that died for you. Mm-hmm. This is what he did for me. It's like an infomercial. You know, sure. you watch the TV and this this fit dude's doing this with a rubber band, and sure, he's like, yeah. but if you buy this rubber band right, right now, and you know, but wait, there's more. There's two yeah. rubber bands, but right. all you got to do is this, and yeah. the dude's jacked, and it's not because of the rubber yeah. band. It's yeah. a sale. It's it's an yeah. infomercial. With with Jesus being the real deal, it's much easier sell because yeah. I've tried it all. I've tried drugs, didn't work. Yeah. I tried alcohol, didn't work. I tried women, didn't work. I tried money, didn't work. I tried, and, and not that money's not okay to have, mm-hmm. but but like it, it yep. doesn't fill the, the the hole in the soul that is literally created for God. So I think number one, if you don't believe it, they don't believe it. But it's not just God, right? It's it's um, volunteers. Yeah. What am I selling? I'm selling that it there's there's fulfillment in serving. There's fulfillment in giving your life away to help your fellow neighbor. I'm selling, hey, if you get involved in volunteer Mm -hmm. and set up chairs and tear down chairs. Parking ministry. Yeah, parking ministry when it's 119 in Scottsdale, (laughs) Scottsdale, Arizona. Like when you're making somebody else feel like a million bucks when you help them park. And like, you know, true living uh, comes from giving. Yeah. So I think when it comes to the the, the church yeah. at large is always sell, we're selling hey get involved we're selling hey you should get in the Bible more we're selling you know for, for me uh, we've grown to where I, I, I I'm not 100 percent on this but it's around 50 full time employees and maybe another I mean maybe another 75 80 part time employees and then a thousand volunteers like so you 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 have to one of the things I think is this is you know people follow vision. Right. And so you have a lot of business owners, CEOs, maybe they started out with vision, Mm -hmm. but the vision deteriorated and you lose sight of the vision. Like, what's the vision? What are we trying to do here? And dangle that in front of me all the time. It's like Nehemiah building, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Fighting around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, but, but around the halfway point. Yeah. Right. The, they, they, he, he rebuilds the walls in a record supernatural 52 days, but around the 26 day mark, he starts to get tired, mm-hmm. starts to get fatigued. Yep. Here come the critics. Yep. Oh, you'll ne- you can't build anything. You never built anything in your life, Nehemiah. Mm-hmm. If a fox jumps on that wall, it's going to fall. That, I think, feels like business sometimes. Like, I've never it's done tro- this. You got trolls. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. trolls. Like, yeah. I, yeah, maybe he's right. I've never built a marketing firm. I've never built a real estate firm. Maybe he's negative right. Negative comments maybe, on your social media. Yeah, negative comments. Foxes jump on the wall. It's going to come. <laughs> and, you start, and you start to buy the lie. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not going to buy the lie. What did Nehemiah say? He goes, he now... now None of the critics worked. None of the yeah. naysayers worked. You know, the halfway point of fatigue, even he he's still on the wall. Now people are going, we're going to kill you. Come right. down or we're going to kill you. And he's like, I'm not coming down yeah. off this wall. I love this one remark he makes. He goes, he goes, I'm doing a good work. I'm not coming down. And I think the people that watch you and listen to you, they're doing a good work, yes, man. Yes. They're doing good work. Like, Tell don't them. come That's down. Right. Keep going. But I, I think it's important because Nehemiah just kept recasting the vision. Yeah. Like, it's it's almost like every 26 days, we need to yeah. keep recasting the vision. How, how do you, Pastor, uh, uh, recast the vision for a church, for the impact for the impact yeah. you yeah, make? It's great. <laughs> for like I really like that word. I like the word, impact. <laughs> um, I, I think it's, it's never ending. It doesn't go away. Yeah. It's like every week, it's like, you know, I'm telling a story about, and somehow the vision is interwoven into the story, into yeah. the message, into yeah. a video that we play. Mm. Um, for our church, Impact Church, uh, I, I really wanted, first of all, a one word purpose statement when I yeah. named the church. One word that says it all. Oh, you know what? Impact was the name of our pro athlete Bible study. It was called Impact Pro Athletes. And I was like, oh, how about just impact church, right? Perfect. God impact me, me impact you. That's yeah. that's the great commandment. Yeah, that's right. Right? Because the great commandment, for those that don't know, Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Yeah. And he goes, love yeah. God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm like, impact is the great commandment, right? It's also the great commission. 
because Great Commission, Jesus said in Matthew 28, go go into all the world and yeah, give this away. That's right. That's like right. baptize people, give it away. So Impact said it all. And of course, you got crosses, dude, all over the jerseys. Fire. It's Weatherford, bro. baby. That's fire. That's fire. Steve. That jersey's fire. Weatherford, baby. Absolute <laughs> gas. He just had one on. I was just with him. It's <laughs> gas. But you got the cross. You got the cross. The, cr- yeah. the cross mm-hmm. is is the symbol of our faith. Yep. The, what is the, the cross is about what Jesus did for me. I wanted a symbol about, well, what do we do for him? And so you would you believe when I named the church Impact Church, I was trying to figure out, I want a symbol, like an image, of something yep. to go with it. Yep. God led me to the star. That's why the star is in all of our brand, because he led me to Philippians 2.15, and it says that you shine like stars in a dark and crooked universe. The world's yeah, dark. It's, for it's crooked. Short, yeah. So shine, So the, the cross, it's the symbol of our faith. This, the, it's about what Jesus did for us. The star mm-hmm. is, what are you going to do for him? That's right. Okay? So I'm always constantly casting that vision, nonstop. Like, yeah. what are we trying to do? We're trying to... I always say my, my own purpose statement for Travis Hearn is is to, you know, more people go to heaven when they die and less people go through hell while they live. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great purpose. Thing. Right, right. And, 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 and a relationship with God does yeah. that for us. Yeah. And I, I'm not just reading it out of a book. Like I've lived it. Yeah. I've walked through it. Right. I've seen it. And right. now 6,000 people in my church in, yeah. in, in 14 years have been water baptized. Yeah. I can't, I can't change a human heart. Yeah. I can't yeah. make you go from I, I don't believe to I believe. Like only God can do that, you know? <laughs> so it's like, dude, let's go. Keep casting the vision. Don't you can't cast it enough. Amen. Amen you cannot that. cast it enough. I, I want to talk about that. You were mentioning your church earlier on. That's a multi million dollar budget. And I'm i I'm watching your 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 sermon when we most watch sermons. And you even said in the first year of your church, of the new church, mm-hmm. you guys are facing foreclosure. Yes. Four months behind. Now a lot of the entrepreneurs that I coach, I'm in the financial service, I'm in the insurance business. And sometimes, why I thought, thought that was so relevant is because I'm recruiting guys from broken careers or broken businesses, and they're coming to me as like a third, fourth career. They come mm-hmm. to me as a third, fourth business that they started. And they think that it's, a, it's, it's an irony for them to start talking to people about finances when they're coming because their finances are wrecked, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm, I'm, and I'm telling them, listen, bro, that's the reason why you're the most qualified Yes. To talk to people now because you've restored yourself, you know, on, on, on another career path with those same talent, skills, and abilities. Yeah. But now you're doing it in a, in a, in a business, in a career that yeah. doesn't have all of that, the riffraff. Yes. So what was your process going like? I'm preaching God and stewardship and da 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 da, but yet I got, I'm four months behind in our yeah. flow card. What was going through your mind and what was some of the trolls? What was some of the, what was some of the enemy? whisperings yeah to try to get you off track there so when when we when we so when andre wadsworth and i came together so andre wadsworth played football for florida state as a walk-on then he earned a full ride scholarship then he became the number three draft pick in the nfl that's crazy crazy it's peyton manning and then ryan leaf and then andre wadsworth so andre originally started a bible study for his teammates big dude man big dude yeah Yeah. i mean they call him the human missile (laughs) They did defensive end. Six, I, hey, I won't want to get talk, uh, stuck by that, right? And 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 so Andre started a Bible study for his teammates and in his house. So at that moment, it's an NFL Bible. I don't know him at that moment. Okay, he starts a Bible study and he's flying preachers in from around the world to you know lead those Wednesday night Bible study, yeah. catering it you know pro athlete yeah. style. And then they opened it as a church. So I'm not involved yet. Yep. So that was from like 2000 to 2009. Yep. I came in in 2009, met, me and Andre met, hit it off. Um, the previous pastor was going to leave and start a church in California, felt mm. called away, mm. and they wanted me to take over this church. It wasn't called Impact Church. It was a very, it was 200 people. Um, but the, the they synergy- needed They needed a leader. Yeah, they needed, they needed a leader. leader. Yeah. And the synergy of Andre and I, now at that time, he's not, he didn't work for the church. He was a football player. Well, well, you know, they bought a building. Well, he bought the building. He's okay, a, he, you know, and he's stroking those checks. Well, when 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 co- or COVID, COVID was a whole other deal. But yeah. when 2008 and the We're financial recession. collapse, yep, yep. Um, you know, people started losing jobs. People sure. started losing their companies. So then you stopped giving to your church. You Ties are out. Ties are out. Golfers right? are out. Yep. So that's how that church got into trouble because of the economy, the economic yeah. collapse. So I come in. Um, I I go hey. My wife and I prayed about it like we're supposed to take this church. And I asked Dre, I said, hey, if you if I do this, will you be my right-hand man? And he's like, I'm in. 
Wow. And so he, he's my, my assistant, a pa- pastor, but really he's, he's the other me. He's incredible. He doesn't preach, but he does all the back end stuff. And it's almost like a CFO, COO, COO, yeah. CEO all in one for yeah, a church, yeah. <laughs> you know? And he's a business, he's a genius. I mean, he's yeah. owned six dealerships in Miami, but think about this. When 2008 hit, he went from making a million to losing a million a month. Wow. Right. So, so when I met Andre, he, w- he didn't have the ability to keep stroking checks yeah. and bailing the church yeah. out. Yeah. So when I met Andre, I took over the church. I hired him. We worked for free for a year and a half wow. as volunteer pastors wow. because we had no money. Mm. And the, the mortgage payment was 25,000 a month for 200 people, which doesn't right. work. Right. The offerings every month were about 10 grand. Yeah. You know, and, and, and <laughs> you're, we were you're still 15 grand negative. Yeah. Ne- and, negative. And, and that's just the mortgage, yeah. not the utilities and all sure. everything. So, so, so yeah, we were four months behind. So that gets me to your question, um, man, it has to be built brick by brick and stone by stone. Every business does. You can, you can get a windfall. Hey, I got this big contract or I'm a construction. I got a big deal in paradise Valley. Great. But that yeah. doesn't sustain you. Yeah. It's got to be built on lots of small stones that are laid in brick by brick. And so we, we started building yeah. brick by brick and building people, you know, because I think in church or in business, yeah. you can, you, you can, you can chase the wrong thing. It, it you, you can, you can chase money or you can chase success you know, or even performance. Yeah. Like, don't be performance driven. Be people driven. Be about the people. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't look at your clients as a way to make money. Yeah. Look at your clients as as a friend. Yeah. How how you're helping them, and and it's helping them rise to the occasion. Yeah. And and so we little by little. I can't take credit. Truly, the miracles that happen are incredible. We yeah. we, we flew to the bank and we were like, you know, we flew yeah. on buddy passes yeah, to, to John Wayne Airport. They're right there. John right? Wayne <laughs> Airport. Yeah, you heard it. Yeah. And you know, Dre's six four, three hundred pounds. I mean, a buddy pass. You get the worst seat on the plane, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's got his legs draped over <laughs> poor person in front of him. Like, it, Last row right next to the lavatory. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And we went to the bank and we begged for mercy and we're like, look, we grew from 200 to 400 or whatever it was. And and we're like, I'm, I said, I'm not looking for a, a handout. I'm looking for a chance. And they just sat there in their suits and they're like, you know, we appreciate you guys, but like we're a bank and we're foreclosing on churches all over the nation. And I'm like, I know. I, I know, I understand that, but like, I think I think I can do this. I think I can do this. Yeah. The next day, they called me and they restructured our loan, wiped away the debt, the yeah. hundred thousand behind in our mortgage payment, four yeah. months, yeah. and and restructured the interest rate, and our payment went from twenty five thousand to fifteen thousand. And like, this is miraculous stuff. She dropped, she dropped. So they just basically back into a portion of the back. No, end they the didn't back in nothing. They made wow. it go away. They made it go away. So they for so they debt free, little bit of yes. debt forgiveness. Yes, a lot. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. And if you don't think that's miraculous, call your own bank right now and try to do that. Get it? Hey, give it a shot. Give <laughs> it a shot. Put it in the comment section below. <laughs> it ain't yeah. happening. Yeah, it's not happening. So we had a lot of great things going for us that that, that really felt divine and yeah. that, that helped us build. But man, you got to build. You got to build one brick at a time. And sometimes one brick seems heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So how do you sell that? Okay. So now you got you got this huge, humongous opportunity. Now, the flip side, if I've got my entrepreneur hat on, context is now a lot of the sales guys, now a lot of the, C, maybe the CEO, now they look thirsty to the clients. Now they look thirsty to investors. How do you not look thirsty even though, according to the math you just gave me, you still have about a $5,000, uh, uh, because they went from 25 to 15, yeah. but you're, yeah. still, you're still collecting only yeah. 10, so you still had a $5,000 yeah. setback. So how do you do that without looking giddy or jumpy or in this case thirsty? So, so I, I love the I love that word thirsty. <laughs> I, I think okay for number one thing is I think you got to be just authentic, man. Be who you are, whether that's fear, whether that's a little bit of doubt and uncertainty. Yeah. But but also but also have enough faith in yourself that what you're doing is making a difference. So my, I came from this position of I believe we can help make. The world a better place. Yeah. I I have I have hope. Yeah. I can give hope. Yeah. Right. So people people want to be a part of that. I I want to help. I want to help, man. I want to help people going through a divorce. I want to help people going through drug addiction. I want to help people going through whatever. Yeah. Right. So so it, it takes time to build trust. That's part of it. But once you build trust and you you're proven over and over and again, we did what we said we were gonna do. Yeah. We did what we said we were gonna do. We did what remember when I said we were gonna, and then we did what we said we were gonna do. Yeah. Well now here we have another situation and we're gonna do what we said we're gonna do. Wow. And so I, I think, you know, um for for 
for us, it's no, it's literally no different than than what corporate America is doing. It, it's it's yeah. it's the exact same thing. So you, you're talking about we use media, we use videos, we use social media, we use Instagram, we use Facebook, we use TikTok, we use Twitter, we use email, we use databases, we use. I, if, if it's out there and I can use it, yeah. I'm a fisher of men. I'm going to use it. And the thing is, when, for me, just being an observer, just being a lay person in a church. Yeah. When I see a pastor focused on growing the youth, grow, yeah. uh, like attracting youth, attracting young adults, that is a sign to me of church that's growing. Great. But you go to another church, it's the same people there, and they're old, not only older in age, but it's the same kind of tired message because the pastor looks tired because the pastor ain't casting a vision. Yeah. Yeah. That to me is not a church that I see that's growing. But you show me a church that is, and you even said in that word that you had 500 people on Friday night, 500 teenagers, youth on a Friday night, yeah. on fire for Jesus on a Friday night. Yeah. And actually that number is now up over 800. We, we, have, there go. we have a young adult service. It's college kids. It's yeah. on Thursday nights, bro. It's, it's ASU kids. It's GCU kids. Yeah. It's over 800, 800 young yeah. people, yeah. and dude, it's fire. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. you know, Jesus light type stuff. It's, yeah. it's dude, it's like, in, and they're hungry, man. And I, I think that's the thing. You said thirsty. Let's talk about the flip, the flip side. Mm -hmm. I think the world is hungry for authentic. We're tired of the fake crap, man. We're tired yeah. of getting sold a bill of crap, a, a bunch yes, of... Yes. We, we want authentic. Give, give, define authentic. Authentic is... We're not having church just to um, just to check a box that we went to church and look at me and I'm a great person. I, no, we want an encounter with God. Mm -hmm. You don't want an encounter with Travis Hearn. You yeah. want it with God. Yeah. Because when that when that's the real deal. Yeah. And, and, and then even who you are through and through, right? Yep. Because we all know, man. You know, uh, the 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 authenticity is is what's attractive and it's tried it's tested and we believe in it and so i, I think you know you said with the youth and stuff yeah i mean a church you know i had a lady say one time because because at this point we have people flying in to go to church Amen. every sunday <laughs> truly or flying in to get water baptized but i had a lady she she drives a, about an hour and a half away every every sunday yeah and i was like that's crazy and she goes pastor a church alive is worth the drive and i was like bro let's go I said, I love that statement, but you're right too. Yeah. A, a church with, with youthfulness, mm -hmm. like, you know, yep. the, 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 the youth are confused, man. We live in a confused world. Yep. So, so the truth, I want the truth. Yep. I want the real deal. A, a couple of different categories I want to make sure we cover here too as well. You just suffered a major change in health. Yeah. I mean, look at you today though. I would never think that what you're about to reveal right now in the next few minutes, yeah. that you went through, you went through. Could you share what, 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 what I'm about to reveal? Did yeah. you want me to take my shirt off? Hey. Is that, is that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you had rings. <laughs> <laughs> First time I had a pair of nipple rings. See, to me, it's to me. Hey. he can't say it. I can say it because yeah. I live on the no. line. I, I, I mean, I can say it. Okay. I live, I, hey, I live on the line. I, I don't, but I might, maybe. I mean, I, you know, we'll see. If my wife likes it, I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> but, <laughs> no, man, two years ago, I was in great health, um, and and out of nowhere, we, 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 I suffered a brain aneurysm, hemorrhagic stroke. How about this? On Thursday, I got my life insurance rating back because I was going through an application renewal to yeah. increase my coverage. Yeah. On Thursday, I got an A-plus rating. Wow. On Monday... I had a stroke. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank God you at least so so got the policy on on, on Friday. Our church worship team we released a song wow. called "He Is the Miracle," which is crazy. Then on Sunday I preached a sermon called "He Is the Miracle." Wow. And then on Sunday, uh, the number one, the song that we wrote, first song we've ever written in our lives, it climbed the iTunes charts to number one. Wow. So like we're on cloud nine, man. We're like, let's go. And then freaking Monday, I had a stroke. I was going. What, what so was I was holding some grapes, and I was with my wife and my daughter. And my, I was taking my youngest, Jazzy, to 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 the store. And I started dropping grapes. I get to the store. I'm having a stroke. I had no idea. I get to the store. Natalie was at the church. My wife, and I texted her and I said, I'm dropping grapes. Kind of weird. We had cold plunges that morning. I thought maybe it's just still a little, yeah. you know. She calls me freaking out, like, Travis, please stay there. I'm coming to get you. I'm like, what? She's like, look back at the text that you just sent. Hello, Jibber Jabber. Yeah, I said something more. I thought I said I'd drop in grapes, and I said something more like I'm I'm draping grops or something like that. Well, I'm just thinking like everybody does that. Yeah, like, yeah, come on, the, yeah. got jumbled up. 
I'm having a stroke. I didn't know it. Wow. So she picks me up. We go home. She calls, uh, uh, or she's begging me to call 911. I'm like, babe, like we're men. Like I ain't gonna go. Yeah, like, yeah, well, drop yeah, some yeah. grapes. Like yeah, that'd yeah. be weird. Like what's your symptom? I dropped a grape. You know, yeah. like yeah. she's like, Trav, please, please, please. I said, I'm gonna go lay down for one hour and nap. And if I still feel this way, we'll call it. She's like, please don't, please, Travis. Yeah. I said, babe, yeah. one hour. So I went and I laid down. Five minutes later, I'm like, Some, something's not right. Something's not right. So I started to get up. She walked in to check on me, and she goes, I'm calling. So she gets on the phone, and she goes, I think my husband's having a stroke. Dude, I never even thought of that. I had no, there's yeah. no way. Yeah. In my head, yeah. there's no freaking way I'm having yeah. a stroke. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. So they go, if you think he's having a stroke, he needs to lay down on his back, right? Paramedics, within three minutes, were at my house. Wow. I tested p perfect. I passed every test. They even did a stroke test. Passed it. Natalie's now begging the paramedics, will you please tell him to go, right? I'm laying on my back. I look at one of the paramedics. We lock eyes, and I go, what do you think I should do? And he goes, pastor, as a member of your church. <laughs> Woo! Of all people. He goes, I think. be a paramedic. Yeah, I think you should go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I didn't know the guy from Adam. I didn't know he went to my, he didn't know he, he was coming to his pastor's yeah. house until he got inside my living room. And then he said, I saw the Phoenix Sun shirt and the beard. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's my pastor. So this is how crazy it was. I passed all the tests. I put myself on the stretcher. I stood up, I got on the stretcher, I laid down. And then I'm like, guys, I'll be back. Like, don't worry, dad, it'll be fine. I get in the, in the ambulance. I don't remember anything. That's how fast it happened. So I get to the first hospital. They do a brain scan. They call Natalie. Your husband is has an aggressive brain bleed. It's not good. It's in a really bad area. This is the worst stroke you can have in the worst area you can have it. Wow. This is bad. We need to helicopter him to a level one trauma center immediately. So wow. I get to uh I get to a level one trauma center and I'm hospitalized and 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 like they they the, the way they do the stroke testing yeah. is on the hour every hour yeah. they come in yeah. touch your nose and I'm like this you know you can't lift it all the way up yeah I lost my speech I lost my cognition I lost my memory I lost my motor skills I am not there and when I was in that state of like being a vegetable the doctor told my wife you should be prepared the effects of this stroke are irreversible. But Wow, man! Yeah. Okay, irreversible. I, I'm, I'm shocked because of the way you walked into the studio today. Yeah, it, yes. It doesn't look like you had a stroke because God reverses the irreversible. Because that's what he, ah! he kind of built his reputation <laughs> for bringing dead things back to life. What a great point! I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exactly. Um, you know, wow. and, and and so uh, on, on the next day, I was still in a state of a vegetable, yeah. and they're they're telling me, and and they asked me my children's names. They did it. They you know, what's your kids' names? Date of birth? What year is it? What's your wife's name? What? Uh, they asked me my kids' names, and I said forty. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and mm -hmm. I knew I knew, dude, it wasn't good. Did you hear yourself? Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like being almost blackout drunk. That's the wow. feeling it was like you're you're all you're there but you're like a hundred miles down somewhere but you're kind of the, and and I remember saying for I remember that wasn't right. I looked up at Natalie I, I'm crying she's crying and I said this is crazy I go count it all joy <laughs> I can't I can't talk I can't talk I don't know my kids names and I go count it all joy perfect perfect and the doctor goes what did he say and my wife's crying she goes. He said, count it all joy. It's a Bible verse from the book of James. It says, count it all joy when you fall into trials. So you can't tell me. Come on, baby. That you can't go, tell go. me <laughs> that like I'm in the trial of all yes. trials. I can't talk. I can't think. I can't walk. But somehow, I don't even know my kids' names, but I knew a Bible verse in context of the situation. Bro, Friday, I got released. Went in on Monday. Monday. Up. Got out what? on Friday. Yes. That, got out that on Friday. quick of a turnaround. Yes. Did you have any physical impairments? Are you like yeah. I mean, I have. I still have numbness okay. on the right side of my body. That the first six months, you could have stabbed me and I wouldn't have known. You could have yeah. lit me on fire and I wouldn't have known. Wow. Um, I went through, you know, six yeah. different therapies and hyperbaric yeah. speech yeah. therapy, cognition therapy, motor, everything. 
but over time it, it's been progressively coming back You're in shape yeah You're I, not, did, yeah. I didn't lose any strength yeah. so my strength is good it's just it just feels kind of like when your foot falls asleep Got but it. it never goes away Got it. but it's getting it's getting better and better and better you know so um yeah man i i just think i i wrote a book it's called the fire is for you and the idea was like how many of us are in fires Man, how many of us like, dude? It feels like we're in a fire. Of, uh, we're in a marriage fire. Yep. We're are, we're in an addiction. We're in a depression. Economic I'm a, economic, economic fire. fires, yeah, right? Yeah, Financial yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm a business owner and I look like I'm supposed to have my t together. Yeah, right. And like, dude, I don't, dude. <laughs> like, it feels like it's burning yeah, down on me. There, yeah. And like, what what I've learned with God is there there's no such thing as wildfires, but only controlled fires. Right. In other words, the fire is for you. Yeah, so right. when you look through the 66 books of the Bible, it talks about fires, yeah. trials, yeah. the fire. But what's the point of the fire? To purify you, yeah. to, to, to heat, yeah. make that pressure, bring out the impurities mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. If, right? he's, if he's the master potter, he's got to put you in a, pot, in a fire. Absolutely. And a large part of that is temperament to, so to temper you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the fire is for you. And then chapter, chapter one is called the titles counted all joy. And that kicks it off. Come on, baby. And dude, it's crazy. I mean, it's, we it's got a story of you. Yeah. yeah you, it's you're, it's, you're, it's you're the whole it. story yeah. in depth of the stroke story. But you know what it is? It's not really about me. It tells the story, but this is about the reader because it is going to give the reader the tools yeah. to navigate through the fire. Yeah. It's going to give the reader the tools to go, dude, I'm going through this. Yeah trial this fire how do i get from here to here yeah and what does it mean for me because because we all go through them we all go through them yeah. and so uh e even the firefighter dude he wrote some he wrote his take on it it's crazy it's crazy how you look at his we have screenshots from when it was happening mm -hmm. from between my wife and different people and like it's not good this isn't good i need mm -hmm. you now like it, it's it's dude it's what we all go through we go through hell yeah we, we go through hell. If we're honest, like life is freaking hard, mm -hmm. hard. So how do we get through hard? You know, how do we get through hard? Uh, I, 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 one of my best friends is coach Monty Williams. He was the sons for the, uh, the coach for the Phoenix Suns, but he's been, in, he was a player. He's been a coach forever. I love this statement. He goes, everything you want in life, this be great for your, for your listeners. Everything you want in life is on the other side of hard. There you go. Boom. There you go. There you go. And that book helps you figure out how to get on the other side of hard. So the name, the fire is, is the it? Fire the fire is, fire is for, for you. you. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then uh, right now, where can people get a, a, a list to get a pre-order? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for yeah. shouting yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, they can go to TravisHearn.com. Okay. Right. Uh, T-R-A-V-I-S-H-E-A-R-N.com. Or Amazon. The, they can go to anywhere the book is if, if it's if it's if it's november 17th that's right it would be yeah. amazon anything before or after they can also go to travishern.com gotcha and and check it out hey let's make sure uh whether it's uh before the 17th or after the 17th make sure you buy it on amazon so we can pump this up to become a bestseller let's go on amazon <laughs> so i know i know how that works so very cool so um last couple of things i wanted to ask you maybe it's in the same category yeah you know I, I often hear people say this matthew you know i don't want god in my money i don't want god in my politics mm -hmm. we're voting here in the next three weeks mm -hmm. we got to continue with our finances everybody's listening to the economic policies of these politicians everybody's hurting financially everybody i mean i got people in my office that make 100 200 thousand a year barely saving anything because yeah. they got to dig deeper into their pocket and right. barely giving to the church because they got to dig right. deeper into their pocket so what could you say what what type of insights perspective biblical reference that you can guide people to in terms of hey listen god is in politics god is in your money or not yeah man i i think it's so great especially in this exact moment um I, I, I would say vote on, you know, for, for me, it's I, I'm going to vote on what I believe the, the policies of, of the Bible are. I, I, I'm not here to get or anywhere to get political, but mm -hmm. I am here to get biblical, mm -hmm. you know. And so like, so are, are there some things on either side of the aisle that aren't biblical? Yeah. Okay, well, I don't care about those things. I, I want to look at what's biblical. And for me, that's what I'm voting for. The, the Bible has withstood the test of time. Sure. Every culture, yeah. every leader, every president, every king, every it's it still stands. It still stands. Yes, it's right. been scrutinized. It still stands. Right. It's always going to stand, right? So so for me, I, I think it's important because, um, and to vote, because so many people just don't. 
Like vote, get out and yes, vote. Like yes. you say, well, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. You don't have to like either one, but no. look at their policies right. and, and what, what do they do for your life yep. or what don't they do for your life? Don't get wrapped up in the, the, the mob and the media and the mob mentality it's and popularity this contest. and that popularity. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. dude, vote yeah. on policy. What is okay for you? What's going to put more money in my pocket? That's right. Exactly. hundred percent. That's my number one. Wait, yeah. <laughs> which, which candidate is going to lower my interest rate on my home? Yeah. Which, which candidate, you know, is going <laughs> to is going to cut gas price because that's real to me. Yeah. Which candidate and, and is going to drop jobs. groceries yeah. for me? Yeah. That's sure. real to me. Yeah. I don't care about all that stuff. Like right. I got a family, man. Like, dude. Exactly. I need some money in my pocket. You yeah. know. Well, because for me, economic policy is number one because it gives a man an opportunity not only to protect. But also to provide. Yes. Because the thing is, if you don't give man an opportunity to provide, guess what happens? Other men try to steal your stuff. That's right. Because they got to provide for their family. Because they're trying to protect them too as well. But if every man out there has got his own provision. Yes. Because he gets the pastor's vision. Yes. The guys working through the pastor get a vision. And we now get the provision. And our provision is supposed to help right, out right, fund right, and finance right. the vision. Then you got everybody working symbiotically right versus trying to steal snatch and grab and, and, and rub one another yeah and i, I think here's it, i'll leave this super spiritual thought with everybody because mm -hmm. it's 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 true but it might be weird is i believe everything is spiritual before it's physical mm -hmm. so i believe there is a world that we cannot see that is in warfare uh, demons angels warring mm -hmm. for my life, your life, my calling, my purpose, your calling, your yeah. joy, your marriage, your yeah. babies and children, mine. There's a, an end. If you could put like goggles on, spiritual goggles, and see yeah. into the spirit world, and you could be like, oh my gosh, yeah, like we, dude, they're battling, right? Right? <laughs> like a movie? Well, the reason that's important yeah. is because here, here's what I think. If, if I could have, if I could be the president of the yeah. United States of America, if I could be the most powerful man in the world for yeah. three minutes, I'd do three minutes. I'd be out. I'd yep. resign. I'd do yep. it for three minutes. But I would say this, like the, the, the book of Ephesians in chapter six, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers and the dark of the darkness of this world. Yeah. What it's saying is it, we Democrats and Republicans aren't enemies. That's right. It's, it's not a wrestle between left and right. It's not a wrestle between black and white or brown or green or gold or blue or this thought or that thought LGBTQ, or your neighborhood. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. LGBT, it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't no. matter. The wrestle's not against each other. It is a spiritual battle. And until we figure that out, we're going to stay divided and we're going to stay battling each other. Yep. That's not, you're not my enemy. Yep. My, my, the Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love, what what is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say your neighbor that looks like you. He didn't say your neighbor that thinks like you, acts like that you, like, that you like, that you like, <laughs> that believes like you, that has the same sexuality you do. Yeah, I understand yeah. everybody's got yeah, a thought, yeah. and I I do too. Yeah. But he said the love. That's what he said. The yeah. love your neighbor, Amen. right? Amen. Doesn't matter what nation they're from. Doesn't matter if they're China or if they're Russia. I know, yeah. I know. They're all the but like, no, they're our neighbor. Yeah. And love, dude, love, love would change the world. Yeah. You know, you and I are born into a two, two, a, a two tier system, right? We we, we have the left and the right. Yeah, nah, right. man, get rid of that. We're yeah. Americans. 100%. We're freaking Americans. Right. Somebody, hey, red, have red, your listeners <laughs> study study Rwanda. Rwanda, yeah, study well, Rwanda. Sure. Yeah. They went through a genocide. A, yeah. a, a, a million Rwandans murdered by machete in 100 days by each other yeah. because of citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Hutus, Tutsis, and Belgium came in in the 60s. The, 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 they founded Rwanda. Yeah. You know, my friends in sure. Rwanda are like, ha, 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 like we've been here forever. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Belgium comes in, fi founds Rwanda, creates citizenship. And, you know, if you're darker and, and shorter, you're part yeah. of the Tutsis. If you're lighter, they're all African. It's they're all black. Yeah, that's right, right. Oh, it's demonic. Like, yeah. you set up a, a two-party system, it's going to fail. Yeah. Because we, we, we're supposed, Jesus said, a house divided against itself shall not stand. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. eventually, the animosity in Rwanda, you know, the, 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 the 10%, the mm -hmm. Hutus, they, they mastermind a, a genocide. Right. They yeah. blow the president's plane out of the sky, yeah. and then they go barricade it, and they murder yeah. a, a million yeah. in a hundred days. And now, and now, they have one citizenship. We're Rwandan, and they've been restoring and Amen. rebuilding. Amen. And it's the safest place I've walked through Amen. the middle. Of this, like the, it's incredible reconciliation, the forgiveness, man. Come on, that's what we need in this nation. That's what we do need. That's what we need. Go out there and vote. Make sure you go to church. Make sure you. Uh, have a lot of success in your business because God needs to use you as an entrepreneur and he needs to use your investments 
to expand the kingdom of heaven. So that being said, uh, on fire on this podcast, we've got Travis Hearn. Make sure you go to TravisHearn.com and make sure you pick up his book, The Fire Is For You. If uh, you, you don't get it yet, get on the pre-list and make sure on the 17th of November you get it on Amazon. Uh, listen, Pastor Travis, I uh, when I get out there, man, I'm definitely going to visit. Yes, I'm definitely going to visit man. your church, man. I, I appreciate your time. I sure, appreciate you. you. I appreciate this fellowship, and uh, I hope it's not the last. Amen. Okay. That being said, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please put your biggest takeaway in the comment section below. You agree with us? You don't agree with us? We want to know. We want to grow. That being said, subscribe, like. That being said, God bless you guys. Until we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. Be money smart today. Bye-bye.